but you should know better than most. The reason we wrestled this power from mediocre men who don't look like us was not simply to turn around and hand it to mediocre men who do. The point of this power is to be uncompromising, to be unsparing, to be able to sit across from a man we greatly admire, with whom we share an entire professional, personal, ancestral history with, and to tell him without any reservation that he's fired. That's what this moment right here, right now is about, Nick. Listening to Duck Dust FM. You're not gonna believe this, but the sneaky second episode of Secret Invasion slithered onto Disney Plus last night after leaving a only slightly bigger audience than Miss Marvel on a supposedly massive cliffhanger, having just temporarily killed off Maria Hill. Where will our characters we care about and the increasingly large number of ones we don't go next? And what will they do? Um, good question. I have no idea, and I don't think the writers do either, but let's see for ourselves. So this hour waster starts off in the very specific Brixton area of London in 1997, long before Marvel decided to frag itself, but not far enough back to stop Captain Marvel from coming to Earth or a local theater. Here in Brixton, London at 234 Canterbury Street at 3.46 p.m. on an overcast Thursday in October, the not as convincingly as the movie De-Aged Fury meets with the Skrull refugees, and I think some of them are the main characters from the show, probably. Fury promises them a place to live before promptly fucking off for the next 25 years. So after another two hour long AI credit sequence, we find Talos and Fury being hunted on a train by Russian soldiers looking for a black American. But Talos manages to fool them by disguising himself as a Russian OnlyFans model. Then we get some talking and more talking about Fury's history of being a black American and eating fried chicken. No, seriously, that's in the show. That's like it's like they didn't even want to listen. Talos then tells Fury they've already secretly invaded Earth, negating the present tense of the show, and Fury in turn tells Talos to fuck off. Back in London, London, Maria Hill actually seems to be dead for now, and her mother chews out Fury and calls him not the Nick Fury he used to be. I think Thanos' snap changed you. You were never the same after the blip. <laughs> Yeah, that's a first. In the background of all this bullshit, much like reality, a Russian-American war is starting and all the highly objective cable news mouthpieces are fully on board, while a different controversial commentator with an uncanny amount of resemblance to a real-life political commentator who argues against a U.S.-Russia war with a strikingly similar set and ideology detracts from his totally unbiased counterparts and suspects a false flag operation as a dig on the real person. Yet, funnily enough, in the series, he's the only one who's actually right. Go fuck yourself! That's the first thing I want to say tonight. So after an exceedingly excessive amount of walking and mindless talking, not at the same time, mind you, the scrolls meet and talk scroll Russian about how Fury abandoned them and if the leader guy who has a name is worried about the Avengers, which he is not given the current lineup. The scrolls then take the Disney-minded way of doing things and elect a dictator who promises to fix everything. Meanwhile, back in the Washington DC neighborhood of London, Rhodey secretly invades a restaurant to meet with Fury and they talk about how an invasion is happening despite it having already happened decades prior and that more stuff about race and politics and such. You know what? I'm not qualified on that score, I will say. But it Go fuck yourself! Brody, who's probably a scroll, eventually says fuck this and fires him, to which Fury says, I'm Nick Fury, and I'm a badass, before having an emotional breakdown. Didn't phase him much when he was killed and S.H.I.E.L.D. was compromised. Then, yes, this thing is still going on, Olivia Coleman interrogates a scroll with skin-melting acid and cuts his finger off, because the kids you're apparently making this for love that shit. He tells them that they're making some sort of scroll bowflex, scroll flex, if you will, before dying. Then we randomly go to Fury, breaking down to his wife? And she's a scroll? Tune in next week to see the inner machinations of their sex life. I don't think so.
Maybe it's superhero fatigue, even though there's no superheroes in this show. Or maybe it's Marvel fatigue, but this show, almost like all of its predecessors, is not doing Marvel any favors in fixing that problem. The plot jumps around in seemingly aimless directions and lingers on unimportant filler longer than scenes that supposedly impact the story. Once again, the talented cast is wasted under a dull, sloth-paced script that drags on in all the worst spots, and sometimes you can't even tell what the hell someone is saying. Grams it on the bingham with a gam gum. Creatures on the upper with the tram sign! This isn't even including how dark the show is, not really thematically besides the one torture scene, but literally. I'm all for dark lighting to set the tone of an episode, but not when you can't see what the hell is happening most of the time. Not that anyone cares, regardless. Two out of ten. I'm seriously looking for something redeeming, but it's not so much that there's cringe or bad shit happening, which there is, but that nothing is happening at all. Fucking like and subscribe for duck's sake. Right. The Duke.